Okay, yeah, it's working. Hi, I'm Father Wesley at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church, and welcome to uh, the final little video on Weird Christianity October, where I'm going to try to talk about the Witch of Endor a little bit. I've been asked for this one a few times, and it's got some confusing parts in it, and I probably won't give you all your answers. I don't know if I know all the answers, but we're going to look at some of that right now. But before I get started with that, just want to remind you that tonight, Friday, tonight, at 7 p.m., uh, we'll have a Zoom Ask Me Anything, or you can ask me anything about weird stuff, supernatural, anything like, basically ask a priest anything about weird stuff. So be sure to join us for that. All right, the Witch of Endor, Witch of Endor. Witch of Endor is from the Bible, the first book of Samuel, chapter 28, verses 6 to uh, 25. I think it was uh, here, um, somewhere in, in, in that area. Um, and uh, Witch of Endor. So when you hear the word witch, right, you're probably thinking, uh, uh, you're either thinking two things if you're watching this, right? Either you're thinking the wide brim black hat and lots of cackles and perhaps, you know, some kind of boiling ch children in something, right? You're thinking of, of, of a witch, right? You know, uh, or, or you are thinking of the modern day religion of Wicca. Okay, you are probably either thinking of those two things when you hear the word witch, um, neither one are really accurate for this passage in Samuel. Uh, which of Endor, that phrase, which is the common phrase, is the translation of the King James Version, which translated the, a Hebrew word for witch. Uh, most modern translations say medium. What she was, was she was a medium or a diviner. Uh, well, what's a medium or diviner? A medium is someone who is like, uh, kind of like an oracle, perhaps you could say. Um, uh, uh, so, someone who divines the future or divines knowledge that one might normally have, okay? In this case, specifically, she was a medium and did that by necromancy. All right, necromancy, because right? that's what's going on in this passage. First off, is she is a necromancer, all right? Now, if I hear you say, if I say necromancer, you probably also are thinking in your head, right? Uh, uh, some evil wizard, right? Summoning an army of zombies and skeletons or something. That's not what necromancy is. Necromancy uh, is a form of divining information or um, the will of the God, of God or the gods or spirits or something via raising the dead. Okay. Uh, okay. Necromancy. It comes from first word necro. All right. Means dead things. You've probably heard that word before. And then mancy. Mancy is an is a is a is a is, a, is a ending on most words to represent some form of divining thing. So the witch of Endor is doing necromancy because she is divining via the dead. She's doing the mancy of the necro, the, the dead, all right? There are other forms of mancy. Um, uh, two, I had to print them off here. Uh, there are lots of them out there. Two, two, one you may have heard of at least is uh, ornithomancy, which is divining by the flight and patterns of birds, okay? And then a fun one here, as someone who has, uh, at this point, seven cats at home, my wife and I do, um, is alluromancy, the divination of the movement of cats. So you watch the movement of cats and, you know, do, should I take this job or not? Well, my, my cat, if my cat sits on my right side, then I'll take the job. If the cat sits on the, the, the you know, the, the other side, then I will turn the job down, okay? If you do that, you are practicing alluromancy, right, by, by definition, all right? And necromancy was just that. The idea was you could contact a spirit, summon one up in some way, shape, or form, either in ghost form or a more corporeal form, perhaps, but usually some kind of ghost or shade, and you could demand it answer your questions. You might have all sorts of questions about what you should do. Should you, um, you know, go into battle or should you take this job or whatever? That, that was what it was used for. So, Saul, King Saul of Israel, is visiting this necromancer, is visiting this medium who used summons up the spirits of the dead to answer questions. Right? Why? Well, what happened is that Saul was rejected by God. And uh, so God no longer spoke to him, and he tried a workaround. It's interesting, in the book of Samuel, he goes in secret. Uh, he takes two attendants with him. And one question my wife actually asked me to look into, and I can now give the answer, is, is who's telling this story, right? We have this, this story in 1 Samuel, um, 
Uh, was it Saul that said, hey, this happened to me? Was it, was it the medium that said, so by the way, the king came to me. Who told the story? Well, there were two men, two attendants with the king, and maybe they were the ones that told this story uh, because the medium wasn't going to tell anyone. Why? Because Saul had outlawed what she was doing. He had made, he had outlawed mediums. In fact, in fact, I find this passage interesting in that she's not really ever blamed for anything in this. Like, she's not presented as a bad guy, right? Um, uh, Saul goes to her, and the first thing she, now he goes in secret, right? She doesn't know who this is initially. And the first thing she says is, I can't do this. It's against the law, right? Uh, the medium of Endor, the witch of Endor, is a law-abiding citizen. She might have practiced mediumship, but she knew it was against the law, and she wasn't going to do that, okay? Um, but Saul begs her and says, not going to tell anybody, and so she relents, okay? And who do you want me to contact, right? Well, Saul wants Samuel. Samuel, God's prophet who had died, because God's not speaking to Saul anymore, so Saul figures if he raises up, if he, if he summons the ghost of Samuel, then Samuel can, can give him the answer he needs, okay? And this is where this passage starts getting debatable. Scholars are going to debate over what happened, because in the text itself, it seems pretty straightforward. In the text of 1 Samuel, the witch says, well, the medium, sorry, says, okay, fine. Um, and she summons up Samuel. Samuel comes up, and what happens in the text is that she cries out in a loud voice, and then she says to Saul, wait, you're the king. You deceived me, okay? Uh, she also says an interesting statement, one like one of the gods. I see someone who looks like one of the gods or a divine being, okay, coming up from the earth, and it's, lo and behold, it is the prophet Samuel. Um, at that point, Samuel uh, uh, chastises Saul pretty badly, actually, for doing this, for seeking out the witch. I'm sorry, seeking out the medium. I, I was practically raised on the King James. I might only be in my 30s, but, you know, it's the popular translation. Um, raises the medium, okay. Uh, 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 chastises Saul for contacting the medium. Interestingly, Saul doesn't chastise the medium. Uh, he just doesn't. He ignores her. It's, it's not important uh, for, for him there. He's getting after Saul for, you, for doing it. He's not blaming her for, for helping him. I find that kind of interesting as well in light of her whole, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm not going to do this. It's, it's, it's breaking the king's law. Okay? Um, so she seems to be pretty honest, actually, which to me is, plays an important role. That, that, that detail is actually kind of important here. And so Saul chastises him, and, or, or Samuel chastises Saul, and Saul leaves depressed. Because basically what Samuel says is that, uh, yeah, God is done with your sin and wickedness. Uh, he's done with you disobeying him. You're out. You're through. Leave it alone. Okay, and that's, that's, that's not really an answer that Saul wants to hear. So he gets his answer. It's not, it's, it's, it's not the one he, he really wanted, though. Um, all right. For, the story seems pretty straightforward. But... In general, uh, theologians have three overall interpretations of this passage. Because, as a straightforward reading, that opens up uh, a can of worms, right? And theologians, uh, myself included in that as a pastor, prefer things to be a little bit neater, right? A little bit tighter. Um, and, and this is messy because straightforward reading is mediumship works necromancy works she actually summoned up samuel's spirit now i also say also from a personal perspective um this is kind of unfair and i i would rather rather this not even be possible because think about it samuel is enjoying the afterlife he got done with this Saul guy, right? He all this stress of life dealing with the king. He dies. He's enjoying the afterlife, probably in God's presence. And suddenly, he finds himself in this dirty old dank cave back in front of Saul who wants to answer him some more questions. I imagine Samuel's a little bit like, um, I, I retired from this job literally by death. 
I don't need to do this anymore, right? Um, I would rather, right, right, when I'm in, in, gone into the afterlife, the only time I want to come back is when Jesus returns for the resurrection. Beyond that, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm really not interested in being, being summoned back to answer a bunch of questions. That's just kind of rude, actually. So I find, I find then even if necromancy wasn't considered a sin in the Bible, I would just think it's very rude. Just, 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 just rude. Okay. So, so don't do it. Don't, don't bring these people back up. They're, they're fine. They're good. They're resting. Leave them be. Okay. Um, so there's some problems with this, right? Well, option one, option one that I've heard before is that this whole thing is a demonic delusion. It's not really Samuel. It's an evil spirit playing the role. Okay. Um, the problem with that is that the text does not say that at all. I mean, not even close. At the end of the text, uh, the medium is even kind of presented as being a pretty good person. Saul is depressed, and she says, hey, why don't you eat something? She offers him something to eat. She then slaughters a cow for him and his servant so that they have something to eat. She takes care of them, doing normal, uh, very normal, but ex but. Uh, honorable level of showing hospitality. She's presented as a hospitable person who was going to obey the law, except she was cajoled. Samuel doesn't even chastise her. Like, the whole story presents her as being, you know, a pretty good person. I mean, maybe she shouldn't have done the necromancy part. The, the Bible's pretty clear on no mediumship and no necromancy, no summoning up dead spirits to answer your questions. But... Uh, she's not really condemned in the text. And the text doesn't say anything about being a demonic spirit. And the words seem to be words of God, right? Samuel says what is truly God is thinking. The text is presented as Saul's final chastisement, okay? So I don't buy that interpretation. I think the, it's, it's a demonic spirit ruse doesn't work, which means if it doesn't work, that's really the, that's really the, the soul, the spirit, the something of Samuel, which means, yes, this is a, uh, I am going to say, an absolutely confirmed case of a ghost in the Bible. There is a ghost right here in the Bible. It is Samuel's ghost. There is no other way around that um, because I think it just, just, that's what you got here. It's not a demonic spirit, so it must be Samuel. All right. So at that point, uh, plenty of theologians will say, all right, fine, you know, this is really the spirit of Samuel, um, but... But this is a really special case, right? This is a one-time off. God allowed it to happen. Under normal circumstances, the medium couldn't do this. This gets, this gets more tricky. Why did I say it gets more tricky? Because some of this interpretation hinges on the fact that she does cry out in shock. She does cry out in shock. So there are two options here. And I can't really present a final answer on this, by the way. I'm not gonna be able to give you a clear, coherent answer. Sometimes, sometimes we don't really know, okay? Sometimes we just don't fully know an answer, and I can't always do that, okay? But she cries out in a loud voice, and either A, some say she does that because she's shocked that what she did actually worked. Okay, oh wow, this, this actually is a spirit, I didn't know that. Or two, because as the, as the verse continues, she somehow, in summoning Samuel, realizes this is the king that forbade her from doing this, and now she thinks she's going to die. And she might be crying out in fear, not because it worked, but because she knows who this is. In fact, the next verse actually says, you didn't tell me you were Saul, okay? And again, Samuel doesn't chastise her. Um, Samuel turns his ire towards Saul. Um, so she, she gets scot-free. Now, as for the first one, the first option, that she was maybe just a charlatan and never really worked. Um, there's some historical backing for that, okay? So there's a movement, uh, 1800s primarily, um, called spiritualism. And there's um, a couple of famous people and sisters in New York, the Fox sisters, some of you may have heard of that name, who in the 1800s claimed to be able to contact ghosts and spirits of the dead. Seances as well were very popular during this time. They probably still, I'm sure they still occur, but there was a period of time where they were very, very popular. And there was um, certainly a lot of confirmed uh, uh, charlatans operating there. The Fox sisters did eventually at one point uh, say that they had faked all of it and they, they renounced all the stuff they had done. They said it was all, it was all, it was all a show, it was all a ruse. Magicians, professional stage musicians are very good at doing stuff that imitates 
a normal seance, right? Uh, sleight of hand maneuvers, uh, misdirection, right? You know what misdirection is? It's, it's the magician gets you to look over here when he's really pulling off a trick over here, right? There are lots of things that could be done to produce a very, very convincing seance or a very, very convincing contact with the spirits from beyond, okay? Uh, sometimes it can be psychological tricks. There are uh, modern-day mediums that perhaps engage in some forms of psychological manipulation. They're just really, really good people readers, right? Um, it's like if you go visit a psychic and the first thing the psychic says something along the lines of, I can tell something is really bothering you. Well, of course it is. You went to visit the psychic. Something's bothering. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is. And 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 maybe maybe if you're a young lady uh, and and you look slightly pregnant and you do this, right? The psychic might say, "You're concerned about your baby, aren't you?" I can read that. Oh, oh, I, I am. Well, they just saw your hand move, right? There are tricks that these people do. Okay. Now, so maybe. Maybe the medium of indoor. Maybe that's all she was. Maybe she played tricks, right? Maybe that's how she made her money. She made a living doing this. She was a good person. She took care of us all afterwards. She was trying to obey the law, right? And you're like, okay, I can't do this anymore. I won't do it. And that was it. So that's one interpretation. Okay. Now, another interpretation is perhaps she could do this from time to time, which again, honestly, I just think is rude, right? Again, if I'm enjoying the afterlife, I really don't want to be summoned back to answer a bunch of pestering questions. So part of me thinks that it probably doesn't happen much because I just don't think God would allow, I hope that God doesn't allow something to happen uh, that just seems so rude to me. You know, if, I, if I'm dead and gone and I'm in the afterlife, leave me alone, okay? Um, and, but, but the text doesn't say that. It doesn't say she was a charlatan, okay? It just says Samuel came up from the grave. So I think it's definitely Samuel. I think we definitely have an actual ghost story here. I was a Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't believe in ghost stories. Well, you are in one, okay? Uh, we have an actual ghost story here. Um, but I think it's pretty unclear whether this is something God allows to happen in a normal cases or it's something that was a one-off. But the text doesn't say. It really honestly doesn't. I, I can't... I can't say, well, no, never, ever, ever could actually happen. Um, the Bible does condemn mediumship, though. God, God specifically says, don't do that stuff. And I do think there are some good reasons for that. Um, uh, first off, if you really could do that, again, I think it's kind of rude, right, to be able to force someone. I mean, I mean, we want to talk a lot about consent in the modern world, right? Well, can you imagine uh, the moral issue of uh, ripping a spirit out of the afterlife without its consent so you can ask it a bunch of questions? I mean, even if, even if necromancers could do that, even if mediums can do that, right, even if they can summon up these spirits to do that, it just seems immoral, to do that to somebody after they're dead. They didn't consent to, to, to you summoning them back up to answer questions, right? Um, and I do think also from a Christian perspective, we do have to worry about deceitful spirits, evil spirits, things like that, who can play roles. Sometimes you watch these ghost hunter shows and, and, I, and, and they'll ask these spirits these questions and the spirits will answer. And sometimes I wanna say, but how do you know it's telling the truth, right? I mean, even if it is a human spirit, Humans are liars in real life, right? Humans are jerks sometimes. Maybe, maybe this is a really nasty, maybe this person is really nasty in life. They're nasty in death. And, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a 12-year-old girl named whatever. And maybe they're just playing with you. Maybe, maybe they're really kind of nasty people, right? So even if you think all that's real, right? Even if you think all of it's going on, if you think that they're, that they're not, I'm willing to talk about ghosts and hauntings at the AMA later. Um, but even if you're like, hey, all this is happening, um, it's pretty dangerous, if nothing else, right? Because maybe it's lying. Maybe it's being manipulative. Maybe it's abusive, okay? And maybe you're trusting it too much. So I think God has forbade that kind of thing for some really good reasons. Um, but Saul comes, and it seems to happen in, in this one case in 1 Samuel. And I do want to point out again, at the end of the story, Saul... Uh, Saul's depressed, and the medium offers him food and, and kills a calf for him. Um, she's not presented as being evil in this. She's not presented as being bad. They don't burn her at the stake at the end. They don't do anything like that. Um, I think the Bible would conclude, hey, don't do that anymore. But Samuel, again, doesn't condemn her, and she comes across as being very hospitable, very, very conscientious, very kind. Maybe she only did it to save her own skin when she realized who this was, but... You know, she gets, she gets, she goes away scot free, honestly, with it. And then um, Saul eventually, of course, dies in battle, and King David takes over, and Saul's, Saul's at an end, and we don't hear from Samuel again. So, 
that, that's the Witch of Indoor. Um, well, the medium of indoor. Again, medium diviner is a better word, better word than witch. That's an inaccurate phrase. It does sound cooler, though, right? The, the witch of indoor, you know. Um, so anyway, there you go. Uh, that probably didn't answer the questions fully. I know that it left a little wiggle room there. But again, sometimes we don't always know. Sometimes, sometimes the answers, even in the Bible, the, the answers aren't always entirely clear, particularly some of these passages. Because the point of the story was not those details, right? The point of the story was what Samuel said to Saul. It was that God had rejected Saul as king of Israel due to his sin. And he adds a layer of sin on top of it by breaking his own rule, right? This king is a hypocrite, right? I, I banish all the mediums from the land, and then suddenly he needs a medium, and he goes and finds one. I mean, this, Saul is a hypocrite. And I think that's the other part of the story, right? Um, it's a warning against that kind of hypocrisy. It's a warning against saying, well, the rules for thee, but not for me. You know, um, you know, if if rules if rules uh, bind some of us, they have to bind all of us on some level, right? That's that's just the way it is. The king doesn't get an excuse. If if, he's, if no one's supposed to seek a medium, the king can't seek a medium. That's that's what's going on, and Samuel gets on him for it. So I think that's really the point of the story, and that's why the story doesn't go into those details. Um, and we probably know the story because a couple of his uh, King Saul's retinue, um, you know, probably told it later and said what happened. So. There you go, the Witch of Indoor. So hopefully that was helpful for you. Do not forget tonight, seven o'clock on Zoom. The link is posted on the website. There is an event page here on Facebook for that. Check that out. It will be tonight, seven o'clock. And uh, ask me anything about Christianity and weird, strange, supernatural, cryptids, UFOs. I don't care. Ask, ask it to me if it's about weird stuff. Uh, uh, let me know, and I will and try to answer that question to the best of my ability and give you some book recommendations, too. So, anyway, hope to see you tonight, and if, God bless.